So, Radhe Radhe. Welcome everyone in the name of Gurudev because this is his sharing. We are just trying to move our mouth according to his will. So we are searching for quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in Sri Sri Radharasa Sudhanidhi by his sweet will. So we came up already to verse number 162 and the topic is today something else than always. You will be astonished. <laughs> we are talking about Shyam Sundara. Shyam Sundara personifies the ocean of the essence of sweetness. And here's the quote. Madhurya Bhagavata Sara. And that ocean of sweet, of, of sweetness, constantly increases. Anusava Bhinavam Srimad Bhagavatam. So, are you astonished? We are talking about the sweetness of Sham Sundara. But now it comes. It needs that stage of Sham Sundara's sweetness to understand how much more sweet on that base is Sri Radha's moon like face when it rises in that ocean. So now you are not anymore so astonished. <laughs> we are still talking about the sweetness of our Swamini. And this is also the sweetness of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the sweetness of Chaitanya Charit Amrita, because this is the nectar of his pastimes. And it's also the sweetness of our Rupa and Raghunath, because they are giving us exactly what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants them to give to us. And of course, the author of Chaitanya Charit Amrita, Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, is also helping them in a wonderful way to give us that nectar and that sweetness, oceans of sweetness. Because first there is the ocean of sweetness, Shyam Sundra. Then on this base rising, the wonderful moon-like face of our Swamini and she herself is an endless, shoreless ocean of sweetness herself. So today, if you have sugar, you should stay away because it will be completely sweet here. Nobody You're is talking laughing. about diabetes, Doravani. If you have yes. diabetes. <laughs> if you so have fun. diabetes and you cannot take sugar, then you should stay away. Because it will be so sweet. <laughs> so Sri Radha's moonlike face from a Rasa ocean is the headline of this verse explanation or commentary given by Srila Ananda Das Babaji. 
It's verse number 162. Commentary. Sri Radha's face cannot be compared to a material luminary like the moon or an ordinary water flower like the lotus. Just as the material moon comes from the ocean of milk, the incomparable moon-like face of Sri Radha comes from an ocean of transcendental rasa as its essence. If even a single ray from this transcendental moon enters into the heart, it removes the darkness of all the material desires there. If even a single ray from this transcendental moon enters into our heart, it removes the darkness of all the material desires there. That's the way how to get rid of all the things we don't want. Just accept what we want. At least, at least a single ray from the two nails of our Swamini. If this is coming into our heart, everything is set. So this moon is therefore called Sutta Kara Muda Kara, he who makes the ordinary moon futile. So we understand that Ananda Das Babaji wants to tell us you cannot compare the sweetness of that wonderful face of Radharani to anything which is material because this description will not it will not describe the endless sweetness and good qualities of Radharani's lotus face. It's not possible. So to compare that it's actually useless. But why the Goswamis are doing it? They try to give us some impression, some little impression, how sweet this light is which comes from Swamini's moon-like face or her splendor lotus feet. It cannot be compared even to the sun. It cannot be compared to moonlight, sunlight or a mixture of it. It cannot be compared. But the Goswamis mercifully try to give us an end. So the luminary which is rising from the ocean of sweetness is very special and astonishing and is carrying the fresh, astonishing youth of an adolescent girl in Braj, which is well known as the Jintamani stone of Mahabhav, our Swamini. So, Shyam Sundara, maybe in this description, the personified ocean of the, of the essence of sweetness. But what is this ocean of sweetness in the night without the full moon rising in it?
जय श्री राधे एंड आई कंपेयर दिस इट्स लाइक द ओशन ऑफ स्वीटनेस कृष्णा इज डे इन आवर मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड एवरीवेयर बिकॉज गॉड इज एवरीवेयर इफ समवन वांट्स टू बी कनेक्टेड विद हिम ही कैन डू दैट like 5000 years ago he was here on the planet personally but what was the use in that dark night here in this material world who could actually to see the waves of this ocean who could actually see the ocean so without rising of the sweet wonderful astonishing endless nectarian moon like face of swamini in that ocean what's the use that's why chaitanya mahaprabhu came and we all know chaitanya mahaprabhu is this rising moon and ocean in one person and chaitanya mahaprabhu brought us that light that we could see not only the ocean more clear he was focusing us our hearts on the waves on the strong waves in that ocean the rasa waves and we read about this rasa waves because of the mercy of shila prabodhananda saraswati because of the mercy of raghunanda because of the mercy of rupa because of the mercy of that great souls like our gurudev we read in that nectar and this is representing the big waves who are shining themselves because the moonlight behind them makes them shine and this sprinkling light if we just can get one of this rays only one ray of that in our heart then the darkness will be gone radhe radhe gorawani i i had just a very nice um memory when you said about the darkness is going away of course when the light comes the dark darkness is going away but with swamini's moonbeams it is so special i was just reading yesterday in chaitanya chaitamrita that krishna das kaviraj goswami who is the the author of or writer let's say the writer of uh chaitanya chaitamrita he actually he got this beam light from uh ragunath das goswami because actually this coming out of the darkness is not only in a way that now i can see now i can feel but no it is also guru tatva because shrimati radhika she is the original teacher of prem so she is enlightening all of her uh aspiring dasis and all of her eternal dasis with her beautiful smile with her beautiful moonlike face so it's not only that was which was dark will be light now it's also another kind of empowerment the empowerment that comes from swamini is such a high degree uh, let's say of uh, you know miracle 
that even Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who was, I don't know, 80 plus, 90 plus, he could hardly write anymore. And, you know, at that time, they were writing on the palm leaves. They were not writing like with a computer or with anything but their own hands. And he was, you know, he felt difficulties to write, but he was completely empowered and blessed by these moonbeams. They were coming to him through Raghunath Das Goswami. And Raghunath Das Goswami got it from Rupa Goswami. And, you know, before he was also getting guidance, of course, in Puri. So we can see that from Mahaprabhu and Swarup Damuna. But we can, what I feel right now, what I want to express is that the beams of Shimati Radhika's beautiful smile or her, her, her light that is coming, it is enabling the devotees to do things that they would never be able to do otherwise. And that I meditation I like because it helps me also in the times when I think I cannot do it. And that of course in itself is shown a little bit uh, a little bit of Maya. <laughs> I cannot do it because I am the doer, right? Ah. But these times they come when we think, oh, I cannot uh, take the re responsibility. I cannot take the, I don't have the power to, you know, to do what Gurudev wants me to do or Vaishnavas asking me to do or my family expecting me to do many things or my job. But by the remembrance of Swami, Swamini and her beauty, all the things that are impossible, they can become possible that only i want to add because it is such a nice subject how the darkness of the you know desperate soul can always be again highlighted with mercy with love with so many um surprises <laughs> thank you so much Suniti. Yes, this is the wonderful, amazing power of the mercy of our Swamini. We could do nothing. Like here, we are sharing now. If you would have asked me some years ago if I would do that, I would tell you, no, I cannot. And it's a fact, still I cannot, because it's not me. Usually what we do before we take a topic and share this topic, we all pray to Nidai, we pray to Guru Tattva, that they may speak through us, May Gurudev use my mouth. May the whole parampara use this mouth as they like. It's not mine. Nothing belongs to me because I belong to Radha. So Radharani can use even the most condemned, rotten person for her seva. And this is the truth. It's not false humbleness or something like this. This is a fact. So the more we follow the mood of Shishi Vilap Kusumanjali, the mood of Shishi Radharasa Sudhanidhi, the more we get aware of this point, that without Radharani's power, which is the driving force for everything, for really everything, for the whole existence, without her mercy, we are really useless. 
Because what then is the use? Without her mercy, we are just into material life. Trying to exploit this material world for our sense gratification. Without her mercy, we are nothing. But even Krishna, and this is the point here, is just dark. We are without the golden light of our Swamini. And then without her, we would be lost in darkness. But we are so lucky that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, the Goswamis came with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu installed all these lines with the mercy of Radharani could drop down to us. different kind of parampara made for the different moods of the devotees and in this way a blissful stream of pastimes comes to us which is actually the next topic of verse number 163 a blissful stream of pastimes It's about the Maharasa. In the material world, a river loses its existence as soon as it enters into the ocean. But the river of Radha's pastimes is so wonderful that a great ocean comes forth from it. A nectar ocean of great fame. When Sri Shukamuni describes the Rasa dance, he says that the gopis dancing steps were light but quick and that they showed endless artful cleverness in their sweet dancing. Their wine-like arms wonderfully sway like the leaves on vines that are swaying in the wind. And when they cleverly turn around, it is as if their slender waist almost break. All these movements make their scarves fall off and their braids loosen, making the fresh jasmine garlands fall out of them. In this way, they are like sweetness personified. All these gestures are best made by Radharani. And that's why she is a great nectarian ocean of fame. Even fame itself cannot describe the sweetness of her movements. Krishna yara antana poi jiva konjara. Chaitanya Charitamrita. Here is the quote. 
Even Krishna cannot find the end to her glories. What to speak of an ordinary creature? The eyes, ears, tangues and minds of Shamsundara, the Sakis and the Mandaris are like fishes that swim in that great nectar ocean of her glorious in great bliss. In her glories in great bliss. So even Krishna cannot find the end to her glories. In other words, it's impossible even for Krishna to describe that glories. How you can describe something which you cannot find in the end? <laughs> impossible. The only thing which is left is giving some hints like endless ocean, shoreless ocean, always growing, always new, always fresh. Like this you give some hints, but you cannot really describe the glories of Radha. It's impossible, even for Mohan. And this is actually the nectarian ocean of fame. Her fame is endless, shoreless, and deep, endless deep. So deep that even the best diver cannot find the end. So even Krishna cannot dive so deep to find an end. He cannot swim so far to find the shores. So what to speak of normal living entities. Suniti is ready to share something for us. I am, I am enjoying. Jai Gurudev! <laughs> oh, Jai Gurudev! <laughs> it is so sweet that here in this one uh, sentence, Baba is putting them together, Mohan, the Sakis and the Mantris. They are all so bewildered and so enchanted by Srimati Radhika's beauty that is like her, the eyes of them swim in the great nectar ocean of her glories in great bliss. And this morning uh, in the beautiful and exciting Rindavan class, Gurdiv also put this together again. And that's what reminded me that Krishna, he is also in that ca category. He wants to serve Srimati Radhika. He becomes a student. Just like the, the mantra is, we are also the students. We are the students of the Sakis and of our Swamini. And so when Manmohan tries to come closer to Swamini's feelings and the depth of that beauty and of these emotions, her festival of emotions, he also becomes a student. <laughs> because, like Gurudev always says, and also Prabhupada says, he is a foreigner. He is, it's, it's new for him. That ocean of devotion, of selfless love and ecstasy is, is, is completely foreign for him. So he becomes a student. And I like that here in this sentence also, they are all put together. Shyama, Sundara, the Sakis and the Mandris are like fishes that swim in the great nectar ocean of her glories in great bliss. 
And that was also a little bit the subject, uh, a part of the subject that we were churning this morning when Gurdiv was sharing again and again and again and again until it sings in my heart, in our, you know, consciousness, in our chitta, how the situation is when the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Mohan, becomes the student and he has to learn, he wants to learn, especially from those personalities who are most close to Swamini's feelings. And those are the Manjuris. So that is the secret of uh, the key of uh, coming closer to Chaitanya's feelings and to Radharani's, uh, how do you say that, glories that even Mohan takes studentship, he applies. Can I become your apprentice? Can I become your student? Can you teach me? Because you are the closest to Swamini. Nobody knows her like you. Nobody knows her feelings like you. Radhi Kara Prema Guru Ame Shishana And now we may wonder how we can enter that wonderful festival. We also want to swim like fishes in that great nectar ocean of our Swamini's glories in great bliss. And Anandadas Babaji, like always, is giving the answer for us. The essential lesson for the aspirants in that by hearing and chanting about these pastimes, one becomes immortal, one swiftly becomes conscious of one's spiritual identity. The highest form of devotion is attained and the disease of lust is removed from the heart. So Srila Ananda Das Babaji again and again is stressing this point. Again and again. And our Gurudev organized everything so nicely that we can actually do what is written here. Again and again hearing and chanting about these pastimes. And in this way we will be we will be immortal. We will live forever and serve forever our Swamini's lotus feet, this brilliant, shining lotus feet. And we will stay there as the shadow of this brilliant, shining lotus feet. So this was the topic from verse 163. Oh, Gauravanaji, I have one question. Can I ask you? You can ask, of course. Because uh, you, you read that in this way become immortal, no? Yes. Which I, I didn't get. So, one may ask uh, the question, I am already immortal. What is the, the difference between this immortality that I am the soul and then becoming, you know, a Dasi of Srimati Radhika. Is that mm. the same immortality or is that a different immortality? Mm. 
It's the same, and in the same way, it's not the same. <laughs> we are always immortal, of course, but the real immortality is then uh, realized or set when we find our eternal form. Without the eternal form of the soul, we are still immortal, but we are still free to go in the material world, sometimes in the spiritual world. The Tatashta nature is still there. And we will still play ping pong, like Guru Dev is always saying. We will still have this tendency to go sometimes here and sometimes there. And although immortal, sometimes we may feel like we can die. And we have to die. Because in the material body consciousness, you have to die. The body has to die. And if you think you are the body, then you will die. And if you are attached to the things to the body, you will lose everything. You will be frustrated. Your ananda will be not there. So if someone wants to be immortal, usually it goes in the connection of, yes, but when I have to be always there, I want to be always happy, isn't it? <laughs> I don't want to be always frustrated. <laughs> then I don't want to be immortal. <laughs> I want to be happy to the utmost. Actually, this is the present of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is giving us the most high immortality which is possible, always in bliss, always in the highest state of bliss. And we heard about this bliss, even Krishna. For him it's not possible to get the ground of this bliss. Not even for him what to speak of us. So if I want to be immortal, I want to be immortal like that. Otherwise not. But everyone can choose. So Niti, of course, knows the answer. But uh, I want to listen from you. <laughs> She wanted to listen from Gurudev, but Gurudev wants to speak through that useless mouth. So, what to do? We arrange it in that way. <laughs> These are the Leelas. So even Krishna cannot find the end to her glories, what to speak of an ordinary creature. So the next quote I found from Chaitanya Charitamrita in Radharasa Sudhanidhi is in verse number 164. And we are still in the topic, deeply relishing the pastimes at dawn. Because we heard about the dark ocean of sweetness, the blackish blue dark ocean of sweetness, which is useless if not the full moon of amazing, shining, endless sweetness, shoreless ocean of sweetness as moon arises in that ocean of sweetness. Only when Radharani's moon-like face is arising in that ocean, then 
we can see the pastimes, like here. Deeply relishing the pastimes at dawn. Krishna ke Ishvara nahi jane vraja jana. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So the quote is, the people of Braj do not know that Krishna is God. Oh my God, how is that? The people of Braj do not know that Krishna is God? Are they all in Maya? <laughs> yes. They are all in Maya, but actually another Maya than us. <laughs> another form. We know there is Yoga Maya and Yoga Maya is actually taking them the understanding that Krishna is God. For them, Krishna is not God. Krishna may be their son, may be their friend, may be whatever, but not God. And the Mandaris, how do they see this Krishna? Loka Satpandu, like a worldly friend. He's just a worldly friend. Yes, I know him. I heard. Actually, he's a womanizer, isn't it? I don't like him very much because of his qualities. They are not so good. <laughs> but yes, he's my friend. So Krishna is not God in Braj. Otherwise, if you don't see it like that, you will never ever deeply relish the pastimes. Not possible. After dancing the rasa, Radha and Madhava enter the arbor named Hemambuja Kunj and take rest on a jeweled sofa there. <coughs> Sorry. How wonderful is the beauty of Hemambuja Kunj at dawn? The bleas and southern breeze blows softly, making the blooming flowers on the wine dance, carrying their fragrance through the air and attracting the bumblebees who come to drink their honey. The maid servants slowly wake up and begin their usual services of sweeping the yards of the arbors and preparing scented water, better leaves, flower garlands and different unguents. The sakis look through the holes of the wines to witness the astonishing beauty of the divine couple at daybreak and swim in oceans of bliss. When Vrindavan wakes up, she engages, uh, when Vrindadeva, uh, when Vrindadeva wakes up, she engages the parrots in awakening Radhika and Madhava with soft and sweet 
verses and songs. When Sripad in his kinkari form sweeps the Blay Kunja at daybreak, goose pimples of ecstasy erupt on her skin as she hears the sweet songs of the parrots. While the divine couple was making love at night, the learned parrots had memorized their choking romantic words. And now at daybreak, they are giving the sakis and mandaris indescribable happiness by repeating these words. The parrots, the cuckoos, the bees and the peacocks all are Radha and Krishna's assistants in their loving pastimes. The parrots serve them and their girlfriends and maidservants in a marvelous way by reminding them sweetly of their past sports. During their most intimate pastimes, Shamsundra tightly embraced Srimati and placed his hands on her breasts, making her chokingly say, Why are you striking my breasts with your nails? I am not the king of demons. Oh, Krishna! When you were a baby, you scratched the neck of the Trinavarta demon who lifted you up into the air, thus destroying him. Do you want to kill me in a similar way by scratching my breasts? And, oh, Vidakta Raja, king of clever pranksters, why do you hurt my breasts like that? I am not Putana, the witch you killed by sucking the life out of her breasts. You're not going to kill me like that, are you? So these jokes, no one can understand who thinks that Krishna is God. There is another humorous meaning of this verse. Krishna ke Ishvara nahi jane vraja jana Chaitanya Charit Amrita the people of Braj do not know that Krishna is God. When they see Krishna's brows, while he kills some demon, they lovingly think that Lord Narayan, being satisfied with Nanda Maharaj's worship, has empowered Krishna to do this. This is also how they interpret Gargamuni's words, Narayana Samo Gunai. This child is equal in qualities to Lord Narayan, to Nanda Maharaj in Bhagavatam 10 8 19. Sri Radhika thinks in the same way. During your natural baby sports, you played with Putana's breasts. And when Lord Narayan's power entered you, you killed her. The same happened when the Trinivarta demon lifted you up in the air. You have reached adolescence 
Why are you hurting my breasts like that? This is dreadful. What if Lord Narayan's power enter you once more and you kill me? So that's actually a wonderful point also for us. What can help us to forget the Aishwarya aspect? Krishna is God. Actually, it's the fact that he is not God. It's really a fact. It's a Rasika fact, isn't it? Because who is God? Who is doing the work of God? It's real. It's Narayan. Nitai is doing this, isn't it? Nitai is the form who serves the Leela, who serves the souls in the material world as God. This aspect, everything is in Nitai. So we can really say Krishna is not God. Radharani is also saying you were empowered by Narayan. She will never believe that he is God. Then she would be out of her rasa. This is impossible. So as soon as somebody talks about God, it's Narayan. And I remember that we had this discussion with some devotees from ISKCON. Because Brachabhasis always say, Krishna is not God. <laughs> and they say, what? How you can say this? Well, only if you want to be in Rasa Lila, only if you want to be a Brachabasi, you can say like that. If you are in God consciousness, then you will not say like that. And how wonderful that on this space of fact, actually whole Bracha is choking. They are all making very nice funny jokes about Krishna being God. Actually all the jokes are based on that fact. And the parrots, they have memorized all these choking words. And when the maidservants sweep the yard of the kunja, they repeat them, making them relish a stream of nectar and causing goose pimples of ecstasy to erupt on their skins. Blessed are these maidservants. They can relish Radhika's sweetness like no one else. Why is that so? Why can they relish Radhika's sweetness like no one else? It is said that Krishna's sweetness is, is relished in the way how much love you have for him. 
So in the same way, who has the most love for Radharani can relish her sweetness the most. And who has more love for Radharani than the completely selfless maidservants? Not even Krishna, because he is not that sty like a kinkery. So the rasa view is very important. Otherwise, we can never taste this relish of Radharani and Mohan. We can never understand, or it's not a question of understanding, it's a question of relishing in the heart. We can never come to that point if we have still some glimpse of Aishwari above. So if someone asks you, who is God? Then you may answer, Narayan. <laughs> but if you tell this to some devotees who are in Aishwarya Bhav, don't discuss. <laughs> And again, because this point is so wonderful and sweet, we can hear what the parrots say. Listen, O lover, O Shyam Sundara, O king of Relisha. What is this? I see that you are scratching my neck. I am not the king of demons. O Vanamali, O ground jewel of clever pranksters, I tell you again and again, why do you hurt my breasts like that? I am not Putana. Ashari and Shuka heard Radhika speak these choking words during her nocturnal pastimes with her dear Pitavas that are like an ocean of rasa. The Shukka and Shari blissfully sit on a branch of the Pomegrana tree that stands in the Blaikunja and they repeat these words of the loving couple in song to increase the ocean of rasa. Srila Prabhupada says, When will that morning come that I can be absorbed in listening to these prattlings while I sweep the kunja. So in this way we can have our smarana. We can meditate that we sweep the terrace of the Kunja 
in the morning and we hear the parrots how they are jokingly repeating what Radharani said during the night. Just imagine what a sweet seva. You're just sweeping the terrace of the kunja and you hear the parrots from the pomegranate tree This is Smarana. And the colors, Gorawani. Mm -hmm. The colors. I like to meditate on the colors because uh, the name of the kunj is called Hemam Buja Kunj. So I feel that this is a very golden Kunj, because uh, Hemagori is Shimati Radhika's name. She is golden, right? Yes. So it should be a golden Kunj where they are waking up this morning. And also nice to meditate how the sun is coming up golden. And why is it golden? Mm. because this gold is gushing out from our Swamini because she's together with her beloved and she was satisfying him to the utmost and that makes her face even more shine and not only her face which is rising like the moon over the ocean of sweetness all of, of all of her limbs, it's gushing out, it's golden shining. And all Vrindavan has this splendor of Radharani's gold. And then the pomegranate tree, usually this uh, Papagain, what's the name? <laughs> the shukas. Yeah, the shukas. Parrot? The parrots. The parrots actually, they pick this red fruits. Red juice is coming out. So what are you reminded when you have this gold and this red drops? What does it mean? Radharani's passion. She's always so passionate to fulfill all the desires of her beloved. So the parrots are sitting in this tree and they are actually speaking about her passion. Her, pas her passion she showed in the night by serving Mohan in such a wonderful, astonishing, ever fresh way. You mean like that, Suniti? These colors? Yes, I was also uh, trying to feel the the meaning of the names of the kunj because they are not only colors, they are also qualities and you nicely explain it. Hey, mom, Buja. I don't know what is the meaning of Buja. 
Maybe good. I would if... like. Yes, because we we know that we are always eager to serve in Ananga Buja Kunj. Now we hear about Himam Buja Kunj. And these qualities of the Kunjas are not only the colors, Gurudev, maybe also the moods or the um, different feelings. Gurudev is absorbed in another Kunj. Gurudev? <laughs> Ah, uh, there's uh, the mood is uh, the mute. It's mute still. Oh. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. What is the question? The question is that the kunjas they also they represent colors like in this lila. It's Hemambuja kunja, the golden, and then we meditate of the golden color of Radhika's uh, aura or effulgence because she is with Mohan. So my question was, Ananga Ambuja Kunja, that also has a special mood, and what is the significance of the different feelings of Bhavas in the Kunjas, Gurudev? Currently, I meditate in Ananga Ambuja Kunja. I have to mm. practice to that. I have to realize to share. I cannot share without knowing. I have to realize it. I am only practicing in Ananga Bhujyaku because this is my sadhana. So, but I will, it is a good question to know about Swami Kunja. What you are telling is right. I never think to meditate on that. Sudhi, what is the meaning of Buja? Anangam Buja. Yeah, because it's Hemam Buja, it's the golden, and Anangam Buja. What is the meaning of Buja? Buja means. Buja is a hand also. Ah. Yeah, means hand. Hand. So this is new subject to meditate. So give me time, some more to practice and then realize it. Without realizing, I never see it. It's a good question, and I have to do it. Thank you. What is Anaka? Well, they become one. It's difficult to know who is with it. So, did I understand right there they become one? Okay. Yes, 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 you're right. Yes. Ananga. Ananga means to become one. Come, Gatri. Anango, for sure, there. They forget their recognition. Who is who? Who is Radha thinks that I am a Krishna, Krishna thinks I am a Radha. They forget that. Radha. But when 
very never forget. And they relish this dinner. That is Jananda Maharaj can, maybe he can say, share. <laughs> Suniti, you can ask again your question. Yeah, that question, oh, actually the original question was about the different bhavas of feelings of the kunjas because we were reading here in Radhara Sudaniti about Hemambuja kunja. So Hema Gauri is the name of Srimati Radhika when she is golden. And then the golden color is is prom prominent in this Hemambuja kunja. And then we try to deeply go in some re research about that. And Gurudev was so humbly saying that he wants to meditate on this and then share. And maybe you also, also have meditated on this the different feelings of the kunjas and the different bhavas. No, Jainanda Maharaj, we were asking if you want to share on this subject. Sana, listen. Say to me, the nice tea, to sadhvi, less sugar, and agua syrup you. We'll go this without that. Yeah. You Jay Anand Maharaj said Gurudev's explanation, explanation was enough. Like he just came into the room. Okay. So that's another wonderful topic for yeah. meditating on it. And by the time, ask Gurudev again. Nice guy, in the So the next quote of Chaitanya Chait Amita in Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidi, Hundred seventy six. Like my bottle. This bottle is there. No, no, no. Total down. Um, could you please mute? <laughs> Only in Sri Vindavan, which puts to shame even Sri Vaikuntha, what to speak of other places, Matupati knows Radha's sweetness, and Radha knows his sweetness. Again, only in Sri Vindavan, which puts to shame even Sri Vaikuntha, what to speak of other places. Only in Vrindavan, Matupati knows Radha's sweetness, and Radha knows his sweetness. Sri Vindavan the sweet nectar ocean, full of supreme rasa, gives Radhika's maidservants all of their relishable sweetness.
the area which limits even the unlimited abode. So that's a wonderful statement, isn't it? <laughs> About the, the glories of Vrindavan. So in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is a statement. The opulence of Dvaraka and Vaikuntha is only a drop compared to the ocean of Vrindavan's natural opulence. The Supreme Person, Sri Krishna, is the opulent proprietor of the abode of Vrindavan. The earth, as well as the anklets of the maidservants, are made of Jinda gems, and the houses are made of jewels. Nobody asks anything else but fruits and flowers from the wish-yielding wines and trees of this natural forest. Innumerable wish-yielding cows graze from forest to forest. But nobody asks anything else but milk from them. This is why Vrindavan is called an area or district, Janapad, in this verse. It is the most suitable ground for the human-like pastimes of Sriman Madan Gopal and his parents Nanda and Yashoda and the cowherders. The happiness of a Braj devotee will be reduced Kunta, if he were to be transferred to Vaikuntha. The best example is that of Gopkuma in Brihad Bhagavat Amrita. Even Narada Muni was astonished to see that Gopkuma was not even attracted to Lord Vishnu after he had assumed the form of Krishna in a sweet garden somewhere in Vaikuntha. And Lakshmi had turned into Radha. Gopkumar was only interested in Madan Gopal's sweet pastimes in Vrindavan. Srila Anandadas Babaji's commentary. The area of Vrindavan limits even the glories of Lord Vishnu's unlimited abode, Sri Vaikuntha. The Padma Purana states, Oh, how blessed is the area of Mathura! It is even greater than Vaikuntha. And Srila Rupa Goswami writes in Upatesh Amrita, Mathura is greater than Vaikuntha. There is no sorrow in Vaikuntha. Everyone is blissfully engaged in the Lord's service there. That is why it is called Vai without Kunta sorrow. But the opulence of Raj limits Kunta, even the opulence of Vaikunta. So it's an indirect and direct 
embrace of Sri Vrindavan. Because only there Madhupati knows Radha's sweetness and Radha knows his sweetness. Sri Vindavan, the sweet nectar ocean full of supreme rasa, gives Radhika's maid servants all of their relishable sweetness. So without Vrindavan, there is no home for Manjaris. So only in Vrindavan, Dadarani knows the sweetness of Madhupati and Madhupati the sweetness of Radha. Only there. Why? Because of the wonderful sweet help of the mandaris. Without them, it wouldn't be possible to extend always, eternally, that loving exchange between Radha and her beloved. So Radharani needs us. That's the good news. The sweetest home in all existence is the sweetest place is our home. And only there, the footprints of our Swamini are everywhere. On and in the ground. So, but now, because we are in Vrindavan now, there is an amazing thing happening there. There is a great illusionary potency in Vrindavan. You don't believe? It's written here, verse number 189 where the next quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita is, there's written, O oh my mistress Radhike, O oh great illusory potency that enchants the prince of Braj, O oh you whose eyelids are naturally flowing fast ocean, of the essence of sweet rasa. O oh girl 
whose glances are melting with compassion. O oh girl, with a sweetly smiling lotus face, please cast a slightly merciful glance on me. So may that illusory potency cast a merciful glance on me. <laughs> In the commentary of Srilananda Das Babaji, he is right, writing, O oh, great illusory potency that enchants even Sri Gopendra Kumar, Brajeshanandini Durga enchants Lord Shiva, uh, his Lord Shiva's mind, with her ten Maha Vidya illusions. But you can enchant the original Supreme Lord Sri Krishna in innumerable ways. Oh, great illusory potency that enchants even Sri Gopendra Kumar. You can enchant the original Supreme Lord Sri Krishna in innumerable ways. What to speak of Lord Mahadev? Krishna can enchant even the Bhuma Purusha, Lord Narayan, and even himself. Vishmapanam svasya cha sobhagardehe Bhagavatam Canto 3 Rupa dekki appanara krishnera hoilo chamatkara Chaitanya charit amrita Even Krishna was amazed when he saw his own form. So far we understand that he can enchant himself. But, I like this but when Sri Radha is greater. <laughs> but, Sri Radha can enchant even the all enchanting Sri Krishna. Sri Kopentra Kumar Mohan Maha Vidya. Sri Rata is known as Koti Dasi Vatsala. She who is fully of motherly affection for all her millions of maidservants. That's an interesting connection again, isn't it? You remember when we spoke about Udaya Lila. Udaya is coming down. This is actually again stated here that actually when she is enchanting her beloved, immediately the mercy, the connection again is there. Immediately Srila Ananda Das Babaji is stating here. Sri Rata is known as Koti Dasi Vatsala. She who is fully full of motherly affection for all of her millions of maidservants. So the com compassion she has is not only for her beloved, in the same moment for all her maidservants. Because this is always connected. And this is a speciality from our brother Rani. This is the Udaya.
The corners of her eyes melt with compassion when she looks at her maidservants. And the maidservants feel very happy and blessed when she smiles and looks at them in this sweet way. Jai Shri Radhe. Maybe someone wants to correct me, give some more deep nectar, share feelings, or maybe Gurudev wants to dive us more deep into the ocean. So far down, so she has a heavy pain. So two things disturbing me. And I'm the man, <laughs> try to give her. She is collapsing here, Niti, because of uh, our asthma. So by chance, she had a balram. They check and that time she has a all no conscious, she lose all conscious. So Im immediate we call ambulance to send her hospital. And she need oxygen and she is in ICU. Mm -hmm. in care. So I'm little out today, I'm not in. In service and so in the temple service. And so today I'm not fit to share. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe Gurudev, you always share through different aspects. So thank you for that. So sorry to hear, Gurudev. But it's also good to hear because then everyone can pray. And if we together pray for her, because my observation is that whenever somebody is taking something into Radhadasyam, some topic, some problem, it always ended very good because all the Vaishnavas prayed for that person. So we have this opportunity again. So thank you very much for your Kindness for your loving sharing of feelings and your mercy.